My other top guest tonight is Stormy Daniels' lawyer here for a live interview at the very time Daniels upping the ante right now with a new challenge to President Trump's lawyer. And here's the context. She's offering to pay back the $130,000 famously facilitated by Michael Cohen. She says she wants the freedom to speak about the alleged relationship with Trump, which, of course, the White House continues to deny. Now, to share any material or evidence, she also wants that privilege, she says. And her lawyer says Daniels would pay Donald Trump himself. That is interesting, even controversial, because it challenges Donald Trump's line that maybe his lawyer just went rogue with all this and paid Stormy Daniels out of his own pocket. Now, how high are the stakes? Well, new reports that Trump's allies may try to ask a judge to stop 60 minutes from airing a planned interview with Daniels. The idea is some sort of Pentagon Papers standoff for the Trump era. Only instead of the White House claiming that military secrets would be at stake, this would require Donald Trump to argue in court that the nation's interests require stopping the free press to protect some sort of stormy-related secret. That's the background. Now let's go to the man of the hour, Michael Avenatti. Welcome back to The Beat. Thanks for having me. You're making a big challenge here. Number one, have you heard anything back from the Trump side tonight? Well, we haven't heard anything back, but we don't believe it's actually a big challenge. We actually think it's a, a fair settlement offer uh, and one that should be seriously considered uh, and accepted by Mr. Cohen and the president. There's a point that you have raised, which I would call clever lawyering, and I'll read to you the New York Times account of it for folks who are, are following all this. New York State's professional standards for lawyers require they take any settlement offer like this one directly to their clients. That means Mr. Cohen is under a legal obligation to share your proposed deal tonight with Mr. Trump. Explain. Well, that's not really clever, Ari. I mean, this, th these are the rules that, the, that lawyers operate day in and day out under around the nation, uh, whether it be New York or California or Texas or, or anywhere else. I mean, it's very basic. Uh, when you have a dispute, and we clearly have a dispute, mm -hmm. and one side makes an offer to the other side, uh, you as an attorney have an obligation to take that written offer to your client. Uh, here we have made a, a detailed written offer. We made it earlier today. Uh, and uh, Mr. Cohen uh, and Mr. Rosen are under obligations to take that offer, that mm -hmm. written offer, and present it uh, to their clients and then get back to us. Well, let me put it like this. For the benefit of my viewers who know, we do real talk here on The Beat. Uh, I will say for their benefit, your uh, presentation of the law there is correct in terms of the ethics standards. What I'm getting at, though, is that it almost seems like perhaps, uh, to use a word of, of the era, that you guys are trolling uh, Michael Cohen and Donald Trump because they've put out a, a kind of a, a fantastical defense that you and I discussed on Friday, which in the benefit of real talk, I also told people is silly. Their defense being that maybe Michael Cohen went rogue paid all this money out, Donald Trump didn't know about it. So you seem to be pressing or trolling that point by saying, well, now you have to tell Donald Trump who you believe to be his client in this issue uh, about this offer. Well, Ari, quite honestly, if, if Mr. Cohen does not want to tell Mr. Trump about it, or if Mr. Rosen does not want to tell Mr. Trump about it, so be it. I, I'd find it very hard to believe that Mr. Trump doesn't know about it at this point, or perhaps he'll learn about it later tonight. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, our settlement offer requires the signatures of all of the parties to the dispute. So that's Mr. Trump, that's the LLC that Mr. Cohen set up, and that's my client. Uh, and, and people have said, well, there's no way that the president's going to accept this. Well, quite honestly, I don't understand why not. Uh, the bottom line here is, is that my client wants a forum to tell her story. Mm -hmm. um, she's prepared to return the $130,000. And if they do not accept the settlement, this is yet another step, another process by which they're going to seek to silence my client. What are they afraid of? I don't understand. To this day, we've been at this now about a week, and we still don't have answers to the following questions. Very simple. Did Mr. Trump know about the agreement? Did he sign the agreement? We think it's pretty clear he did not. Did he know anything about the payment, and did he pay it or arrange for someone else to pay it? This isn't complicated. And they can run, and they can hide, and we can go week after week after week, Ari, but we're not going home. I, I gather that, and I think it's clear for, to viewers 
uh, one of the things that many experts on this show and others have said is, wow, if this happened to Barack Obama, this type of situation that you just outlined, it would have been a big scandal hour after hour. Something about the nature of Donald Trump, his lawyering, the secrecy, etc., was for a while after the Wall Street Journal broke the story, it seemed to recede. Now it's very much back and forth with the pressure you're putting on him, which brings me to the Pentagon Papers of our time. Uh, your view of this interview, which we know from the photograph, you were there for Anderson Cooper. I understand uh, you and, and your client are not going to tell us what's in an interview that hasn't aired yet. So I'm not going to ask that. Uh, but your view of the reaction reported by BuzzFeed and others, that they would seriously consider the White House trying to get a prior restraint, a legal gag order on 60 minutes over whatever did transpire in the interview you attended. Well, I, I've got to believe that that's not going to happen. I, I have to believe that at some point an adult in the room is going to raise his or her voice and say something along the lines of, are you crazy? Because the fact of the matter is, is that it is very unlikely that they would be successful in such an effort. And further, I think it would be a very sad day for our democracy if you had a sitting president who would proceed with an action against a major television network in an effort to quash a story yep. and prevent a citizen from speaking openly and freely about her version of events. But I want to go back to something you said moments ago, because mm -hmm. I think it's very, very important. This is not about the left. It's not about the right. It's not about Obama versus Trump. Mm -hmm. It's not about Gary Hart. It's not about Bill Clinton. It's not about Anthony Weiner. It's not about the list goes on and on. Very straightforward. This is about shooting straight with the American people. Shooting straight on the answer or the questions that I asked earlier. This isn't complicated. It's very simple. Has there been a cover up here or has there not been a cover up here? And right. what are they hiding right. and why? Why have we not heard from the president as to these issues? Every time, Ari, that the White House is asked about this, they deflect and they say they've answered the questions. They've never answered right. the question. And that is true, and we saw that in Sarah Huckabee Sanders getting herself into hot water citing this arbitration proceeding. I want you to stay with me. Donald Trump Jr. was asked about this actually today, too. We're going to play that in a minute. But I want to bring in to join our discussion criminal defense attorney Sarah Azari and Wall Street Journal reporter Shelby Holliday, who has given us analysis on this story in the past. Your view of what you're hearing uh, from this attorney and this client, who I think it's fair to say uh, have been effective at driving this message towards the White House. Uh, listen, I think that uh, Michael's offer is a reasonable offer, but it's not a reasonable offer to someone who is saying he didn't have an affair, he was not a party to the Hush Agreement, um, he had no knowledge that the payment was wired on his behalf, which is the most incredibly incredulous um, thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, so when you're making this offer to someone like that, I, I mean, I'm not surprised that Michael hasn't heard back from them, um, if they were to even respond, um, it would negate. It would negate their position essentially, which is that they know right. nothing about. And this. that They're speaks. Not part of this. And that speaks to the part of this that is not legal, and it's not about lawyers. Uh, although we've assembled some here, uh, that goes to whether this is a White House that can tell the truth and speak Absolutely. directly about what's happening. Uh, Don Jr. passed on an opportunity uh, when asked about this today. Take a look. Should Stormy Daniels be able to speak, sir? Should Stormy Dan Mr. Trump, should Stormy Daniels be able to speak? Thanks, guys. That's not what we're talking about. Can I, can I ask you about the These are the pictures, Shelby. Well, yes, and I actually couldn't hear that perfectly, but I think generally what we're hearing and what my colleagues at the Wall Street Journal hear back anytime we ask questions about Stormy Daniels is fake news or some version of that. And so I think politically this is really interesting because it's becoming pretty clear that this payment may have been made to help Trump's election, but it continues to bother the White House so much that President Trump, a man who said you could shoot him on, he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and no one would care, is clearly very concerned about a porn star's story. Well, you just and this made is a man who thinks he's untouchable yet. He, he will not answer questions, and it looks like he's very vulnerable uh, when it comes to these sorts of 
of stories. You just made a key point, uh, as you often do, Shelby, <laughs> which, is, which is you're speaking to the hypocrisy of someone who brags about being invincible but doesn't want to get out on the battlefield. And right. you think about that in the context of something we dug up that I want to show everyone. And Shelby, I want your analysis of this politically, and then I'll go back to Michael. This was candidate Donald Trump appearing in what might be called an off-color uh, skit wall candidate on SNL. Uh, take a look. Hey, 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 don't bust for us. We're trying to do this, this ad for Donald Trump so he lets us live in his hotels. Mm. Yeah, maybe visit the White House. I haven't been there since the 90s. Oh, yeah. I'm Donald Trump, and I in no way, shape, or form approve of this message. <laughs> Didn't you used to be a brunette? Yeah. yeah that's what I thought. Talk about a time capsule. I mean, that joke there was at the time a candidate doing these appearances for media, <laughs> and he was literally mocking, I would argue, I'm going to your analysis, himself and his supporters effectively saying, I don't approve of this, but he's in the skit uh, played there by um, whatever you want to call the, the actresses there. Exactly. That clip says, it speaks volumes of President Trump's uh, character, but also he's talked about his personal life and he's been very open about his escapades in previous years. I mean, it's understandable that he would not want his wife and probably, more importantly, his 10-year-old son hearing all of the details that Stormy Daniels may have to tell. But this is a man who is at times very open about his sex life and all of a sudden it's becoming very problematic for him to the point where we're not even getting answers. We're just getting fake news and then another story that proves it's not fake news. Michael and then Sarah. Yeah, you know, Ari, I think it is important that we, we not get over the tips of our skis in connection with this. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is there's, you know, rumors floating that there's paternity issues with my client. I, I will state unequivocally there are none. There are rumors. You state on behalf of Stormy Daniels here tonight there's no paternity issue. 100%. Secondly, we've heard rumors that there was an alleged abortion. Absolutely untrue. It never happened, okay? There is a tendency by many, uh, generally on the left in this circumstance, to do exactly what I mentioned, which is we get over the tips of our skis uh, in connection with this story. We, we want it to be more. You know, it's not salacious enough, so we have to take it one more step. Um, and we're purposely guarding against that because we don't want to be a part of that. We want to be a part of the facts. We want to be a part of uh, my client having the opportunity to speak to the American people and tell her story, which we believe is going to be uh, uh, far interesting enough. Uh, further, interesting we, in the prurient sense of the word uh, that it is salacious or interesting because you think it reveals something of public interest import? Well, I think it I think it will reveal something of significant public interest, quite honestly. Well, can I and just I ask think, a question? And I think, yeah, Shelby, go why ahead. Why did she sign this agreement in the first place if she wanted to tell her story? Well, I think she's going to disclose that. Uh, in fact, I'm highly confident that if this interview is aired at some point in time, that answer will be given during the interview and the American people will judge. You're saying, wait, wait, you're saying, you're saying in the 60 minutes interview, she is going to reveal details as to why she took the money at the time and a logical reason for why she wants to undo that? I'm not going to state exactly what's in the interview. Well, I think what you, I'm going to but say, I think you did just allude to what that. What I'm going to say is... Unless, that, unless what I'm I going misheard. To say is, what I'm going to say is, is that that issue, I'm confident...